didn't always walk like this. I can't run. But I can still remember what it feels like. And I have a goal to run again. I'm not angry about the events that brought me here today. We're in the perfect place at the perfect time. No matter what's happening with me, highs or lows, when I think about this, when I really, really accept this, all my fear, anxiety, impatience, self-judgment just seems to melt away. We're at the perfect place at the perfect time. When I think about this, I'm mentally, emotionally, I'm right where I want to be. We are at the perfect place at the perfect time. No matter if it's heartache, stress on the job, this seems to make it all okay. We're at the perfect place at the perfect time. But could there be more? Consider you're here for a reason. There are events that led you here today. Consider you're here because it's meant to be. Perhaps you're here to get a new idea that's going to shift your life. Look around the room. Perhaps the love of your life is here. Isn't that exciting? (laughs) But is it true? Are we really at the perfect place at the perfect time? Is it really meant to be? And if so, what are the signs? How do we know? Seemingly forever, people have been looking to the universe for signs. In Greek mythology, the raven, particularly bad sign, Game of Thrones fans. No, if you see a raven, find a new perfect place at a new perfect time. (laughs) However, today, if we're walking and a bird droppings fall on our shoulder, sign of good luck. Rain on your wedding day, happy marriage. Groundhog sees his shadow, winter is a bit longer. All signs. I've been reading the signs in my life for as long as I can remember, with a few intermittent breaks. If I see a penny on the street, sometimes I go into traffic to get it. It's a sign of wealth, of course. If I go to my destination, there's a parking spot out front, sign I'm meant to be there. The day I woke up and my feet were numb, sign I chose to ignore. Instead of being open to my awareness and intuition, I chose fear and denial. But we all look for the signs. We all look for those things that will lead us to the next step, show us what's our path laid out in front of us, provide some certainty to an uncertain life. But the question is, how do we trust them? And how do we actually use them to develop the life that we want? Because we all want things in life. Well, my friends, I am not the first one to ask this question. There have been philosophers, artists, poets, scientists, great thinkers across time who have been asking this question. We're going to look at four of them today, my four favorites. The first one from the Roman Empire, about 141 AD. It's a philosophy based in the practical. It's called Stoicism. Of the most notable Stoics is Marcus Aurelius. You may know him from the movie Gladiator with Russell (laughs) Crowe. Stoicism is based in the practical. It's practicality. If you can control yourself, that's all you need to worry about. We all have seen the Instagram posts about this. Don't worry about anything that's not in your control. Stoicism has three disciplines. Perception, action, and will. Perception is how you perceive and act and see in the world around you. Action are the choices and decisions you make according to that. Will, the belief of how you are portrayed within the world. Perception, action, and will. Don't pay attention to anything you can't control. The next, if we go back in time, about 385 AD to the Greeks again, we find the man of the Middle Ages, teacher to Alexander the Great, His name was Aristotle, and he had a little theory of causality, cause and effect. Something gives cause to something else. Sounds a little bit like action. Hundreds of years before, perhaps the Stoics knew this. 
Everything seems to fit together like a puzzle. If we move forward all the way to Carl Jung. Now this guy was mystical. Carl Jung had the theory of synchronicity. How does this fit? Synchronicity is a causal, no cause, seemingly just happening to us. Events that come into our lives that seem like meaningful coincidences. I call these the signs. Now perhaps if we put all these together, we get up to science today. Science has quantum physics, the law of entanglement. Entanglement says that two particles that come together and are entangled, when separated and move great distances, you can stimulate one, the other reacts. That shows us that we're not individuals. We're a collective. Together we're all one. If our particles stay together and react to one another. Okay. Not terribly easy to grasp. So I created a cheat sheet. I created a cheat sheet for us. That I go, this is the geeky stuff that I think about. So this is my cheat sheet here. How do you boil all this stuff down? Millions of years of philosophy, thousands of years of philosophy. How do you boil it all down? I boil it into three parts. Our relationship to things. Choice. And our feeling of connection. Our relationship to things is our perception. How we see the world. This is the Stoics perception as well. What is happening that we see? If we buy a yellow jeep driving down the road chances are you'll see another jeep especially if it's yellow if we decide that we want to see yellow butterflies better bet you're going to see yellow butterflies we can choose what we have to perceive with 4,000 pieces of information coming into our brains a minute we can really start to see we need to collate but how are we collating this comes to choice we need to have our awareness so big that we can choose what we want to collate, what we want our perception to be, based on what we want. But how do we know now that we're getting it, that we're on the right path, that our awareness is open? Our feeling of connection, these synchronicities start happening, the mystical, casual events. Now that's exciting. Okay, let's put it into action. Now, how do I take this in my own life to direct what I want? First is take stock. What were the events that got you here? It's time to do a little inventory. The second is identify what you want. How many people don't really know what they want? Not taking a stance, not identifying and declaring, this is what I want, I will run. The third is how do you feel? Are you ignoring that intuition? Are you ignoring that excitement? Are you passing it off as just another casual coincidence? Okay, let's put this actual into practical. 20 years ago, I woke up and couldn't feel my feet. I went and got an MRI and there were lesions on my spinal cord. 15 years ago, I woke up, I couldn't walk. 13 years ago, I was on a flight from New York City to Boston. The turbulence was roller coaster. I look over the guy next to me, his knuckles are white. And I think to myself, I'm okay if this flight goes down. Eight years ago, I meet a man. I've actually known him for a while. He's my mentor. I call him my spirit animal. And he get, offers me a job. And I take it. And we travel a lot together for this work. And one day he says, why do you hate yourself? never asked myself this question before, but it was true. It opened me up to Buddhism and other things. I started learning actually to love myself. Five years ago for this job, I gave a speech to a large crowd. For the first time, I told my story. That story opened me up, also changed the business. We started telling stories of others, other patients who've had tough times. We started allowing them, broadcasting that out. The business skyrocketed. People could relate. That led to me, one year ago, writing a book. Amazingly, this book became a bestseller in the depression category. <laughs> that book led to this TED Talk. Three months ago, right when I'm at the peak, right when I'm like, yes, this has happened. 
right when people are writing me and saying, you changed my life. Thank you for your book, this ability at my peak. And I'm feeling I've made it. I've really made it. I've done everything. I'm at my best. I break my foot. The good one. And for the second time, I can't walk. But this time I've learned, this is a sign. This is not time to have denial. This is not time for fear. This is time to say, I have more work to do. And I decided, if I'm going to help other people and help myself, I've got to raise my own standard. And I decided to go to the Paracelsus Clinic, which is a health clinic in Switzerland, for a month. Two months ago, my mentor, my spirit animal, my boss says, hey, if you want to go to this clinic, we'll put you on the board of the directors, pay you the same amount, and you get going. Two weeks ago, in this room at the Paracelsus Clinic where we all had dinner, 20 patients together, I am forced to practice my TED Talk in front of all of them. Most of them are late-stage cancer. Many of them are faithful Christians. Cain is suffering from bone cancer riddled through his body. His parents have come in to support him. He's 21. His wife is there. She's 19. We're sitting in this room, and I'm telling him we're at the perfect place at the perfect time. Kane's father came in from Australia to support him, says, um, after my talk, thanks, Jim. I want to start with saying, uh, I don't agree with anything you said. (laughs) And then he drops it on me. Um, What about heaven and hell? Cain's father is thinking about his son dying. And I'm thinking about how I'm perceived giving my TED Talk. It's time for me to think more. I walk away and leave there saying, there needs to be changes in my life. I'm thinking really down on myself. My perception is not big enough. You know, how, how did I do that? One week ago at dinner, Cain stands up and says, Jim, I was walking through town. And I have to tell you, on the side of a building, all I saw was yellow butterflies painted there. Have you seen it? My heart raced, almost jumped out of my chest. Three days ago, I got back from Switzerland, and I was pissed, a little depressed. I'm not running yet. I don't feel good yet. Two days ago, I had coffee with a friend. She said, I can't believe how well you're walking. I can't believe how good you look. And at that moment, I decided my own perception had to be open. My choice was through sickness that I was identifying myself. And you know what? I feel great. And I am walking better. And I am looking better. And perhaps being at the perfect place at the perfect time doesn't feel perfect. And it doesn't feel good sometimes. But if we stay open, And aware, guess what? We're just where we need to be. Thank you.